Hello everyone, this is Pal Ponder on Weather. I'm back with an afternoon update because we have a formidable storm to talk about with Ida that looks to go into the Gulf as a hurricane by Saturday and then intensify to a major hurricane by Sunday, making landfall sometime Sunday afternoon along the Gulf Coast with major impacts plus an overview on the rest of the country. So if you do like weather related content, please subscribe to my channel as I will upload daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's get right to it. Uh, this is your overall uh, satellite picture uh, for this afternoon. And we've got a low level center that has formed just off the coast of Jamaica, just south of Negril. Uh, Jamaica has been hit hard all day long. It started last night and they've been having torrential rains over the island as this is really starting to get its act together pumping some heavier rain and even into uh, the cayman islands as well that's heavier rain starting to approach uh, those islands as well as a high impact event uh for J jamaica as well as the cayman islands as this will continue uh lifted off into the northwest so let's take a look at the overall uh satellite picture of the entire country here and we've got some big storms to talk about up to the north that we'll get into a little bit later in the video but yeah some definitely some severe weather to contend with today into iowa and to uh, minnesota especially into wisconsin here uh, then we actually have a tropical storm nora down here in the pacific uh, we have some activity already into parts of new orleans and to uh, from an easterly wave that's moving across, uh, dumping some even some heavier rains uh, in and around southern uh, Louisiana, even as we speak. Uh, then we also have several other invest type systems out here uh, in the, the, mid, the middle of the Atlantic. Uh, this particular storm right here is not supposed to have an impact whatsoever as it's going to be racing off to sea. But this little impact right here off the off it's coming off of uh, Africa in the main development region, this could actually be a storm as well as it's going to start getting its act together. But our main concern is Invest 99L, which is now officially uh, Tropical Depression 9 or soon to be Tropical Storm Ida. Uh, and it's got a lot of convection around it, and it's really starting to get its act together uh, with uh, some very high cloud tops, and it should really develop uh, into the overnight hours as we go uh, through time. So let's take a look at the latest update as the 5 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, here's the center currently right now. We've got uh, tropical storm uh, watches and warnings out here for the Cayman Islands, as well as uh, Cuba here. It's expected to traverse uh, north, northwestward 14 miles an hour and already expected to be a hurricane by Saturday afternoon. So this is really uh, going to intensify. And the latest projection, even by hour 72, that would actually put it uh, Sunday afternoon. So we're only talking three days away, right on the cusp of a major hurricane. So this looks like to be a developing storm, an intensifying storm, and the cone is really starting to sh uh, shrink uh, with new model data that came in. I'll show you that as well. Uh, but yeah, the cone of uncertainty is about 120 miles out uh, from the actual direct center. But yeah, anywhere along the anywhere in and around uh, Louisiana, especially on the outskirts. Don't, don't let your guard down. If you're in uh, Mississippi, Alabama, or even the Florida Panhandle, you're gonna be in that right front quadrant as well. And you're gonna be some high in, uh, impacts as uh, well. Texas is looking less and less likely that you might have impacts from then because as you would be on more or less the sinking air or the drier side of the storm. But we're talking major impacts uh, potentially coming up on Sunday afternoon, going into Monday and then inland flooding event as we'll go over all the details. So here we are currently. So right now it's it's basically over Jamaica. That's already dumped some very heavy rain. We've got those tropical storm uh, conditions approaching the cayman islands tonight but yeah the definitely of concern is this uh this the depression is expected to produce a lot of rainfall literally anywhere from six to ten inches of rain and up upward to 15 inches across jamaica in total so rainfall totals of eight to 12 inches with isolated amounts of 20 inches across the cayman islands and western cuba, uh, cuba. there's a lot of uh, moisture in the atmosphere with this particular storm 
Uh, and there's it's man that's going to be a huge concern which just life threatening uh flash flooding is definitely of a concern uh with mudslides uh in, in and around uh, Jamaica with the large swells uh, off the coast so life threatening storm uh life threatening uh, surf uh no question so it is it is not a pretty day uh in Jamaica and then going forward this will continue lift uh northwestward and then we could all already see tropical storm force winds approaching uh, Louisiana, even into parts of uh, Texas here as early as Sunday, Sunday morning, you're going to be on the outskirts, but you can still see some wind impacts uh, from this particular uh, setup as this continues lifting off into the Northwest. But the main impacts is right over Louisiana. I'm deeply concerned with this storm on a rapidly approaching, uh, developing, intensifying hurricane. Uh, we're talking at increasing risk of life threatening storm surge damaging hurricane force winds and heavy rainfall Sunday into Monday along the coast of Louisiana. So storm surge and hurricane watches will be likely issued for as early as tonight going into tomorrow, uh, Friday morning uh, with impacts as early as uh, sun Sunday morning with this uh, system rapidly approaching. So expect to really intensify uh, in the coming days. But we have another a hurricane to talk about with Nora right now it's a tropical storm <clears throat> but it will continue uh lifting off into the west northwest as well at nine miles an hour and that is actually supposed to make landfall in Cabo so yes Cabo you could be inundated with a hurricane by the time we get into that Monday afternoon time frame right around the same time frame as um you know, uh, Idaho could potentially make landfall in Louisiana. So we're talking back-to-back -back, uh, hurricanes uh, making landfall on land in Louisiana and as well as Cabo. So it's definitely, uh, st uh, you know, hurricane season is really uh, ramping up uh, in a big way. Now let's take a look at what uh, Ida is going to be going through. So this is why I'm really kind of deeply concerned uh, with this particular storm and the setup that it's going to be going in. Here is the uh, sea surface temperature. Now these are in Celsius, but you can definitely see this 30 degree water, that 31 at 32 degrees Celsius, we're talking 88 to 90 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. That is plenty of fuel and it's, you can see it intensifies. It gets, it gets warmer as you get closer to the coast. So that, that uh, Northwest, Northwest lift will, will put it over some of the warmest waters anywhere out there and that's definitely of a concern right along the coastline here that it's going to be rapidly intensifying as it's approaching land and it'll be probably at its peak intensity and the only thing that's going to stop it is land for it to start die down so that is definitely a concern another concern of mine is it's going over the loop current now when these storms go over the loop current it's got a lot of warm water with it not just at the surface we're talking 3,200 feet down, those warm waters go all the way down over a half a mile. And some of the biggest storms in history have gone over this loop current here. So it's in combination of this loop current as well as the sea surface temperatures. We've got no dry air to speak of in the Gulf of Mexico, and we've got no shear to speak of as well. So a lot of factors are coming into play for a rapid intensification. Here's some of the bigger storms in history that have actually traversed along that loop current. And you can see once it hit that loop current, these things rapidly intensified. The very dangerous Galveston 1900 uh, hurricane that was, you know, killed 8,000 people. That was devastating back in 1900. A lot of people didn't even know what it was coming. Uh, back in 92 and uh, Andrew, everybody knows about that one. I mean, man, it, it was, uh, you know, category five, you know, c coming across that uh, loop current as well. So that it rapidly intensified as soon as it hit that particular area. And then we also had Camille. I mean, look at Camille. I mean, look at the track here. And I showed you the path of Ida. It's almost identical. It's almost scary. And Camille was a dangerous storm. So yeah, some of these, you know, these storms have been known uh, to, 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 you know, go over that loop current. I mean, that's, that's a dangerous setup. And that's why I'm concerned. And even Katrina, you know, back in 05, these are all traversed. And there's plenty of other examples uh, that I could have showed you. But yeah, you can definitely see 
why I'm deeply concerned with everything that's kind of coming together as it's going to the coast. And Cuba is really not going to lessen this thing whatsoever. That's a very small piece of land. It's very going to clip it. It's actually supposed to intensify as it goes over Cuba. So it's not even going to slow it down whatsoever. And this is the reason why the latest uh, GFS guidance on the, the wind strength, the wind swath, has it so uh, strong is because it comes off uh, Jamaica. They're probably going to get on the western side of Jamaica uh, with some tropical storm force winds starting tonight. Definitely tropical storm force winds into the Cayman Islands. And then look, I mean, it just continues to intensify at, even up at, as it goes over this tip of Cuba. And as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico and goes over that loop current, it then it rapidly intensifies into uh, a, a formidable hurricane, if not a major hurricane, after it goes over that 88 to 90 degree water as well. And then making landfall sometime on sun, Sunday afternoon, uh, you're talking in and around Lafayette, uh, uh, the, the, the New Orleans area. So all those areas will be definitely under the gun for a major impact event and storm surge. You know, a lot of wind and you're talking life threatening uh, flash flooding. The, 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 uh, the, the rainfall totals are just crazy. Uh, look, let's look at uh, after all the models have ran this afternoon, they really kind of can. can congealed together and saying, hey, these are, it's a pretty solid line now. This thing is going northwest and it looks to make impact uh, into Louisiana. Say, so yes, it could still deviate a little bit, but we're starting to see a lot of models coming together to saying, hey, this is going to be an high impact event uh, for southern Louisiana. So they need to they need to prepare in a big way or a major hurricane that's going to be on the table rapidly approaching that area uh, by su Sunday morning. So let's take a look at the latest uh, GFS uh, simulated satellite imagery. Even This is Saturday. This is Saturday at noontime. You can already see it's already producing an eye on Ida. So this could already be a hurricane by then in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico going over that loop current. That's a dangerous setup as we continue through time. Uh, we also look at the European model. We could be looking at, like I mentioned, back-to-back -back, uh, potential hurricane landfalls as this is coming ashore and then and then into Cabo. So yes, this is going to be a formidable storm, even with Nora uh, making making a direct impact on uh, the uh, the Cabo area uh, sometime on uh, Sunday, going especially like Monday afternoon. Uh, here's the latest uh, GFS satellite going into Sunday afternoon. This is Sunday about noon time that is a dangerous storm right there with a formidable uh eye to speak of just right off the coast you know pounding with very heavy rain and high winds with that uh, life-threatening storm surge so this is not a pretty uh, pretty setup uh for uh southern louisiana as we go through time here's the latest uh hurricane model guidance as well i mean and even this one takes it down to a 985 right around an 80 mile per hour hurricane by the time we get into saturday afternoon so again we're like we're looking at a lot of models coming together and say hey this is going to be a formidable event make an impact in southern louisiana and as we go through time i mean yeah this actually deepens it to a nine 47 that would easily be a major hurricane around you know 103 knots that's you know that's upwards to 118 miles an hour that would be a category three uh hurricane off offshore sometime around noontime on sunday and if we continue through the latest hurricane model deepens it to a nine 42 millibar going up to a, a cat strong category three, if not on the cusp of a, 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 a minimal category four hurricane with about 128 miles an hour, you know, cat four is like 131. So definitely, I mean, a lot of guidance is starting to come together and say, hey, we, we could be looking at a major impact potential coming ashore uh, for, for uh, Sunday. So for the rest of the country going on today, we got some storms to talk about up to the north. So where they do have... Uh, a slight risk and even an enhanced risk uh, for severe weather for southern Minnesota going into northern Iowa and even in uh, Wisconsin with some dangerous storms. They had a severe thunderstorm uh, watches and warnings out earlier, but this is will continue diving off into the southeast as we go through time. We got the easterly wave down here in the south that's bringing already some rain showers uh, for the southern regions. 
where you're starting to get some rain starting to hint back into the parts of the northwest uh even into like say places like seattle starting to get a little bit of rain showers on the table uh, the monsoon is uh, kind of scattered activity. And then we go through uh, into Friday, tomorrow. Yes, we still could be looking at some strong to severe thunderstorms all over the, a lot of the same areas where that trough just digs in, digs in with this zonal flow up to the north and to Iowa and to Wisconsin again. So Wisconsin is going to be hit hard uh, this week as this boundary will continue moving across into the north northeast with some more uh some more rain coming back in the picture uh for the northeast as we turn our attention to the gulf uh by that time that saturday time frame we don't even have uh, ida on the map here because it wasn't it wasn't even it's just now coming together right uh but yeah up to the north again this same area so the, yeah this is the bullseye this week for severe weather for minnesota into wisconsin into iowa with back-to-back -back systems uh for the next several days with uh with uh, you know heavier rain uh moving across as as we go through the next several days but here's Here's where I'm deeply concerned. On top of the wind, on top of the storm surge, uh, we're going to have heavy rain. And that yellow here uh, is 15 inches of rain. That That is uh, catastrophic for places like Louisiana that are technically right at sea level and even below sea level and spots. And then even inland. I mean, we'd be looking at multi-inch rains in the Florida panhandle. You know, getting into Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, going into Tennessee, into Kentucky, as these will spread northward. Another bullseye is right up here into uh, Minnesota, into Iowa, and Wisconsin, with some very heavy rain with those back-to-back-to-back -back systems of severe weather. Uh, the monsoon continues to remain alive, not as not as prevalent as it was, but still uh, rain showers trying to sneak into Southern California as as well. Uh, from over the next uh, several days. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do share this video on social media, especially if you got friends in and around the Louisiana area. So they need to be let known of this is a potential dangerous setup that's on the table uh, in the coming days. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Uh, click on the next video of, of my September forecast to kind of get an overview of what could be coming for September, as well as the La Nina that's coming for the fall and the winter months. So I appreciate you guys watching. Do like this video. Definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.